Oh look, it's Halloween. So, Halloween, spooky ghosts, delicious candy, and a creepy atmosphere. These are the main characteristics that define this scary holiday. When that time of day comes around at the end of October, the only thing you can expect is pure and utter spookiness. But here's the thing, when I say spooky, I'm not talking about vampires, ghouls, or horrifying wizards. I'm obviously talking about the terrifying mobile games that you'll find in the dark corners of the app store. Except, these games are about as unscary as you can imagine. I mean seriously, what is this? So today, on this special occasion, we're gonna be going on the app store and look at some of the many spooky games that are Halloween based. You can basically think of this as a part 4 to the horror mobile game series. Only this time with yeah. pumpkins. So, without further ado, let's take a look at some horrendous Halloween mobile games. The first game we're going to be playing is Halloween Horror Scary Pumpkin. Now, this is going to be interesting, because the developer of this game made another game that I talked about back in the original Horror Games video. In fact, everything down from the graphics to even the map are the exact same compared to the clown game. But I digress. Looking at the App Store, the game only has two ratings that rounds up to a 3.0. With the description reading, the main character is tasked with finding and destroying all the cursed pumpkins to destroy the pumpkin monster. The main character is tasked with finding and just- Well wait, why is he saying it twice? Everyone in the village has been killed by the pumpkin monster. Be the hero to save everyone from the pumpkin monster. Okay, so I think it's pretty obvious that a developer's English isn't his first language. But again, let's just move on. So, loading into the game, after it tells us it was made in Unity, you are given a difficulty choice. With the harder choices just making the monster faster, and also making it so that it can hear you. For recording purposes, I'll just be playing on normal though. So spawning in, you're put into a bathroom and you're told to collect 17 pumpkins. Good luck! So in short, this game is basically just Slender the Eight Pages, except it's 17 pumpkins. Which sounds like a lot, but more often than not, a lot of them are just cramped into a single room. And also, this map is quite small. There are roughly about three sections to it. The place where you spawn, the lobby and the various rooms, and a basement. Top 5 people in my mom's basement. Number 5. Me. Once again, many other areas that we've explored in the clown game. Oh, and of course, you're also hiding from the monster. The monster in this game is pretty strange. It consists of just a skeleton with a pumpkin for its head, and that's about it. Easily the worst part about his AI is that once he spots you, he will always chase you until your eventual demise. It kind of reminds me of the AI from games like Slinny Tubbies 2, where the monsters also never stop chasing you. But instead of being in a huge open map, you're in a tiny cramped mansion. Oh, and don't think you can just hide behind doors because it sees through them. This, and combined with the AI and the enclosed space, makes it so that it's virtually impossible to beat this game without dying. Once you do die, you're given an option to revive yourself by watching an ad. Afterwards, it gives you some invisibility. But even without clicking the ad, once you reload the game, the pumpkins don't reset. Which thank goodness, because without it, I don't think I would have complete this game. Seriously, you try it. Download this app right now and see if you can beat this game in one life. You'll find it's not easy. But anyways, after collecting the last pumpkin, the spooky pumpkin monster dies. And then we win. Wow. But yeah, that's about all this game has to offer. It's fairly hard, it's cramped, and there's not much replayability in it. So in conclusion, I give this a 2 out of 5. So the next game we'll be playing is Rainbow Halloween Mod Friends. Which, as you might have guessed, is based off of the popular Roblox game, Rainbow Friends. Made by Jad Barker, the game has over 123 ratings that rounds up to a 4.5. With the description reading, Welcome to the Halloween park where witches come true, <laughs> ghosts escape from dreams, and monsters hunt. Visitors forced by mysterious powers keep coming to the Halloween park. Don't panic, be calm, read the dialogues carefully, and use all of the possible resources to survive the nightmare. Otherwise, the monsters will catch you. Once again, incredibly strange English. And as for the reviews, there's only two of them. With one saying, good, I like it. And the other one saying, I hate this game, I can never get past blue, your game is broken. Alright, thanks for letting me know, Poo Poo Head the OG. So, loading into the menu, it gives us two game modes to choose. With solo adventure just being the normal mode, and role playing adventure where you become the enemy. Which I'll get back to later. Beginning the game, a cutscene plays where a school bus goes to a Halloween park, and then all of a sudden, a spooky ghost talks to us saying how he lost his blocks and that we need to retrieve it. And then we spawn in some kind of room. Wait, I thought we were on the bus. 
I don't know how we ended up teleporting to this room here, but whatever. So like the ghost said, the objective for this game is to find 8 blocks. Which again, is just one of the 8 pages, but the monster is the spooky blue creature from Roblox. Okay, so I don't really know what this review is on about saying blue is hard to pass, because in the game, he's extremely slow. And not only that, but he also tends to get stuck on things that are a foot above him. He also has extremely poor awareness, allowing you to move around behind him without even noticing you. But it gets worse. Just to make the monster even less threatening, you have the ability to hide inside some kind of box, which upon activating, Blue instantly forgets you and moves on with his day. And because this map is so huge with many layers, you won't really be seeing him all that much throughout the game. As for the objective side of things, it's pretty simple. Like I said, you have to collect 8 random blocks to put back onto this table. But unlike Slender the 8 Pages, you can only carry one no, at a time. Onyx. So if you see a block but you're already carrying one, you'll have to go back to the table to put one down, only to go all the way back to the same area just to grab another block. Which doesn't really make sense because when we put a single block down, it for some reason spawns multiple in. But anywho, after grabbing the 8 blocks and putting it on the table, the ghost thanks us. And I thought this was the end of the game, but no. The ghost now has you go and collect 5 snacks, which I won't be doing. There's also the second game mode as well, which, like it says, lets you become the monster, where you need to catch these random people that crush your frame rates. However, even if I'm right on top of them, I still can't kill them, and the blue monster is still here and kills me regardless, so I'm pretty sure this mode is broken. Oh, and speaking of broken, this game also has its fair share of glitches, like texture overlapping, weird clipping, holes in the map, and broken water textures. I don't even think they playtested their own game. And combined with the rest of the gameplay features, I think this game gets a solid 1 out of 5. But yeah, that's about it. In conclusion... Hey yo, I'm not gonna lie, that was scary. I, I like, that's scared. The third game on the list is Halloween Witch and Wizard. Magic! Created by Mohamed Rizwan, the game has you go around several levels doing random tasks. Looking at the App Store, the game has under 200 ratings that rounds up to a 4.6. And just like the last game, this one only has two reviews, with both of them being hesitant towards the game. And the description reads, Halloween Witch and Wizard has brought Flying Witch and Fast Wizard to your city for the very first time. You are going to experience a thrilling experience for the very first time that you have never done before. Alright then, I'm sold. Let's get on this game and see what it has to offer. And wow, look at this amazing menu. So after clicking play and going on level 1, I then proceeded to load in. And just a little tip for any upcoming developers, if this is the first frame that you see when loading into your game, you should probably reconsider starting from scratch. Yeah, so unsurprisingly, this game is incredibly flawed. Not only are there just way too many controls on your screen, but their placement makes the game feel extremely clunky. But even worse, there's this really large arrow over your head that makes it really hard to see. And sometimes the arrow doesn't even point properly where you need to go. The first level that I had to do was kill two ghosts under a time limit, and shortly after spawning in, I punched a couple ghosts moments later, with one of them even getting stuck in the gate. But for whatever reason, the arrow was just pointing at a random area on the map, so again, it was really confusing. It also doesn't help that from time to time, you get a lot of ads on your screen. Even if I turned the Wi-Fi off, the ads would still show up. Great. Another element in this game is in level 2 where you can ride on a broom, but more often than not, the broom is extremely buggy, and if you're not careful, you'll end up flying all over the map. A lot of the objectives in this game also didn't make much sense lore-wise. Like in level 1, we destroy a couple ghosts to save a few kids, then in level 2 we give some kids candy, and in level 3 we have to fight this weird wolf looking thing to save this guy in a cage, and then we dance afterwards because why not. But yeah, that's basically the entire game. You just go around doing random stuff while riding on brooms and dancing using stock animations. To be honest, this might just be the worst game that we'll be looking at in this video. Because at least in the pumpkin game, the premise was fairly simple. And in Rainbow Friends, it at least looked graphically okay. This one does neither of that. Some of the directions in the level just don't work. The controls are really stiff. The broom is practically broken. And there's too many god dang ads. So to conclude, I give this a 0 out of 5. Wizard game bad. The fourth game I'll be playing is Visage Haunted House. So remember back in the Witch and Wizard game how that was the worst one I played? Nope, I lied. Just a day later, I found something even worse, which I will now explain why. Right, so you know how in like every single game we've looked at, the developers don't really have the best word choice? Well, my boy side here takes it to the next step. 
as he actively misspells a lot of the words. With the description stating, You weak hearted? No? No? Then this horror game is just the right pick for you. Are you ready to risk your life for saving your friends to a haunted house? In a darkness environment, you should find your way only using a lighter light. Honestly, if that alone doesn't get you to play this game, then I don't know what will. And as for the ratings, it's gone over a 4.2. But the reviews don't tend to agree, with almost every single one of them being either 2 to 1 stars, saying things like too short, doesn't even work, and that they can't even play it. That's not a good sign. But regardless, here we are. And of course, this is based on a level system where level 1 shows us a cutscene with some dialogue. Hey there! How are you? Fine, bro! What's up? Everything okay with the new hostel? Don't know, man. That place looks haunted to me. I see things, and when I look closely, they disappear. Oh my god, that's not okay. You should leave that place ASAP. Yeah, you get the idea. So anyway, we need to help this guy escape from his hostel. But before we do that, we have to ride to his place, which literally has you just drive 10 feet, and then the level ends. Okay, but now for real, we can save him. Wait, but before we do that, we need to collect some map pieces. For some reason, I don't really know why we need to do this since there's already a map right here. But I guess this is more important than saving our friend. Oh, and also, remember when the guy said he was in a hotel? Well, what he meant was a bunch of spread apart houses across this barren wasteland, with some of the houses containing spooky jump scares. But anyways, after we grab these random maps, the level ends. And now all of a sudden, we have to kill five enemies and we're given a gun. Okay, well I guess it's fine to have some shooting in this game, but there's a problem. You can't even shoot the gun. I'm being serious, when I say that I tried everything from switching the Wi-Fi off to restarting the game, it just wouldn't fire. This wasn't just me either, as one of the reviews said, Trash. Can't shoot gun. Was excited. Now disappointed. And funnily enough, the legend Syed responds himself, saying, Hello, we are sorry that you do not like the game, but we thank you for your feedback. Our future updates will improve the game for you. This review was made a year ago. So yeah, I ended up having to cut this game short because I literally couldn't progress if I wanted to. And with that, I give this game a, oh, I don't know, a negative one out of five. It's one thing to make this game look and play like a fever dream. But when you literally can't even finish your game, the game probably should be on the app store to begin with. Wait a minute, unplayable. That kind of reminds me of something. But yeah, I'll be leaving this off here now. What an interesting game. The next game I'll be playing is Scary Horror Clown Survival 3D, which, if you couldn't tell, is Scary Horror, I think. Looking at the App Store, this game was made by Mohammed Aleph and only has 9 ratings that rounds up to a 3.3, with the description stating, Try not to catch yourself by the horror clown and explore the clown home. Welcome to Scary Horror Game 3D Games with Haunted House full of scary clown ready to escape from neighbor the terrors so much in the haunted place of horror creed the evil nun are waiting to eat and kill the enemy. What? So as per usual, this game is centered around a level-based system where you go around harassing this poor clown's house. It also once again reminds me of another clown game we played way back in 2021, where we also had to go around doing random stuff in someone's house. Sound familiar? Yeah. The various objectives that we had to do in this game consists of things like picking up axes, finding oil packs, picking up milk, and trashing a bed. Yeah, that's normal. And hey, hang on a minute. Are those the counter-terrorist hands from CSGO? So, believe it or not, but a surprising upside that this game has is that the monster is for once actually fast. But that doesn't really matter since the AI makes it only go in a single line back and forth. So, if you know the clown's pathfinding, then you're pretty much safe for the entire level. The goals that we have to do in this game also don't make a whole lot of sense. Like for example, we have to go find an axe to go break an oil drum, as well as downright stealing the clown's milk to have it for ourselves. Now you ask me this, who's the bad guy here? The spooky clown? Or the man that keeps stealing and damaging his house property? There was also a lot of bugs I noticed too, like a couple objects floating, because why not? And various props that kept disappearing if you got too close to them, like this shotgun here on this chair that the game wouldn't let me grab. Why even put a gun here if you won't let me grab it? I'm not sure. Thanks a lot, Mohammed. But yeah, that's pretty much all this game has to offer. It's basically just another Hello Neighbor ripoff, but this time with a clown, and a bunch of pointless objectives that we have to do. There's no replayability in this game, some objects are floating, there's barely any content, and the developer's English is all over the place. I mean, at least this game actually had a monster that isn't slow. 
But like I said, this game is pretty much just a carbon copy to another clown game I played, which was a ripoff of Hello Neighbor. Now, I would like to be optimistic and say that a developer might patch up this game, but the last update this game got was over a year ago, so I don't think anything will happen anytime soon. I'll give this game a 1 out of 5. So without further ado, let's just move on to the next game. The next game we'll be playing is Haunted Home Escape Scary Game. A game where you go around in a spooky house and do... something. I don't really know. And unlike the last game, this one got updated a mere four weeks ago. So at least this game might be somewhat polished, right? Well, no. Looking at the description, it says, Can you escape from the room of Hunted House? Are you enough brave to escape this scary horror house? Keep your eyes open on very things and find those things which can eat you. Play safe, find things, and solve different puzzles to complete levels. Okay, look, I know it looks like I'm cherry picking games where the developers have poor grammar, but I swear on my life, it's just a coincidence that I found a game where someone worded haunted as hunted. And as for the reviews, there's just a mere 5 ratings that rounds up to a 4.0. Again, another highly rated game it seems, meaning that it might be good. But once more, the game is anything but bad. So loading in, the game immediately gives us an opening story. Smith was returning home from another city. During his journey, he stuck in a storm. His car ran out of order in a barren place. He saw an old mansion near, so he decided to ask for shelter there. He met a watchman on the main gate and asked him for shelter a night. He allowed him to stay. Blah, 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 you get the idea. So immediately, there's a couple of problems I want to address. Why is my flashlight in the center of the screen? Why am I so slow? And why is it that every time I go in this room, a spooky girl pops up? So the goal of this game is, as you might have guessed, escape the mansion, where you need to find a key in order to do so. In the meantime, you have to hide from this spooky creature right here, who just runs around in circles, and once he spots you, he either moves really slowly or doesn't even move at all. Thankfully, you're given a health bar right here, so he doesn't even one-shot you. But it's not like he was that dangerous anyways. Anywho, eventually after a couple minutes, I found the sacred key, which is put into an inventory system. And after unlocking the door to go upstairs, I assumed that the game would continue. But no, why can't I go upstairs? I unlocked the door, and yet no matter what I did, this invisible barrier just wouldn't let me pass through. That or either the staircase is missing a first step. So yeah, this is the second game where I can no longer progress because of a glitch. And with that, I had to cut this game early. But to be honest, even if I could go up these stairs, I imagine I wouldn't play much further because of how goddamn boring this game is. So yeah, another 0 out of 5 billion. Thanks a lot, Ass of Neum. So as a bonus, a game that I tried to play was Scary Horror Clown Evil Games. A game that I assume features a spooky clown, but you'll soon see what happens. So as for the ratings, this game only has one that gave it a 5 star. With the description reading, Welcome to Scary Evil Clown Survival in which you have 5 days to escape from the mysterious house. You have looked in wide and mysterious house, which is processed by an evil clown. Explore the house and escape from this clown sighting. Huh. So without further ado, let's begin this game. Except, I can't. Yeah, so this game only counts as a bonus because for some reason the game just wouldn't load. Unlike the last game where it became unplayable after a few levels, this one just wouldn't let me play at all. Even after restarting the game and shutting down my phone, it still wouldn't load. So yeah, I guess we'll never know what this game entails, but maybe it's for the better. And with that, I give this a 5 out of 5. Best game we played on here. And that was the last game that I'll be looking at in this video. So in conclusion, a lot of these spooky games were not great. What a surprise. So like I said in the intro, you can basically think of this as a horror mobile games part 4 video, which I apologize for, since I don't really like milking a single series for an extended period of time. But it's Halloween as of uploading this, so I might as well have made this video. It's gonna be outdated in about two days, but again, it's whatever. But yeah, that's about all I have to say. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you sometime in the future. Goodbye. I don't know what I'm doing! Ah! Oh, shit! 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 Fuck me! Fuck me! Oh! 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 Shit! My butt! What the fuck? My I don't want fucking that! Fuck! Stop screaming! Stop! Fuck you! Fuck, mate! Fuck this game!